Ableton just released what I believe is their first mobile app. Now having DAWs on mobile devices is nothing new and you might be familiar with apps like Eiffel Studio, BandLab or GarageBand. But what's different about Ableton Note is that it's not trying to be a full door. Simply, as the name implies, it's just sort of a notebook where you can capture ideas quickly with the device that you're always carrying with you in your pocket. So if you're a user of Ableton Live, you'll probably be familiar with most of the features, but the app comes in a very stripped down version where you don't have the arrangement view and the main interface happens in session view. So the app is great for quickly capturing ideas, but where it really stands out is how you so quickly and easily can sync it to your desktop version of Ableton Live. So in this video, I'm gonna go through how you can use the app to quickly capture ideas. And we're also gonna go through the features of the app and how it differs and how it's similar to Ableton Live on desktop. So here's the home page of the Ableton Note app. So here you will find all your projects. Currently, I don't have any I have made. So these three are stock projects from Ableton. In order to preview them, you can just press the play button right here. And if you want to edit them or add to them, you just press the thumbnail or the title. And then this is the main project page. So this page emulates the Ableton session view. Each of these icons represents various instruments. We have some options here in the top right corner, like metronome, tempo, key and scale, and export audio. So the key and scale will be very familiar to you if you have the Ableton Push or Push 2, for example. So in the same way, you can select what key you want to be in and what scale you want. So say you want a E, minor pentatonic press done then go into one of the instruments now you will have an E minor pentatonic here so that's pretty intuitive and it's pretty similar to other apps and other hardware you also have a button right here which brings up a little menu. And here you can also choose if you want pads. So it's currently on pads or keys. And the keys will look almost like pads if you have the uh, key and scale sets. But if you turn off the key and scale, it will look like a regular piano with white and black keys or light gray and dark gray. Then you have the octave, so where you choose your octave, and a note repeat. So you can decide what value you want to repeat. So put a 16th. You'll hear it repeats. So here you have a few parameters you can tweak in the instrument. So these are based off of Ableton's own stock synths. Now let's say you want to start a set. Now that's very easy, you just press new. And then you have by default three tracks. You got a drum track, a synth track, and a sample track. So let me show you the drum track first. Now this emulates an Ableton drum rack. So the layout is similar to how the stock drum racks in Ableton Live are set up. So you have the kick and the snares down here, and then you get toms and cymbals higher up. Now you probably noticed that the MIDI notes are just automatically inputs when I start playing. But if I wait long enough, they will disappear. And this is basically the same as the capture function in Ableton Live. Only that in this app, the capture is the default input when you record. And what's cool is that you don't have to worry about figuring out your tempo before you start recording, and you also don't have to press record. You can just start playing. So if we just make a little beat. Now we can press capture. And now the app automatically detects and sets the tempo as the master clock.
And if you didn't play completely accurately, you have a little quantize button right here. And normally the quantization works fairly well. And now this drum rack, just like in Ableton Live, is based off of the simpler sampler. So if you go into this icon right here, you have different samples that you can tweak however you want. Okay, let's go to the next track. So this, this is a synth track. And in order to change instruments, you just press the in instrument name, in this case, reverse puncture. And then you have a ton of different presets. So now we're on the bass preset. Say we want something else, maybe piano and keys. You just press that and then you can preview each sound by simply pressing the name. Let's do a road, for example. Then I want the keys because I want some chords. Let's try to record something. Now one thing to keep your eye on is around the stop button, you'll see exactly when the loop is starting. So if you start playing in the middle, you'll also record in the middle. Okay, so it's a little sloppy, but it works. Maybe we should try out some effects. Next, we can lay down a bass, so we can add a new instrument. We'll go down to presets and then we'll see if we get a bass, for example. And we can preview them. Okay, let's just take this one. It's not great, but it doesn't have to be because we're going to change it in Ableton Live later. So it's a little sloppy, so let's just quantize it, see if it works. So now I tweaked everything a little bit so it's a little bit more in sync. Okay, so a very simple arrangement. So now let's uh, make a little melody. Okay, so I have a little track here with the warm saw keys as the preset. It sounds like that. And again, the good thing about this app is that you can change everything in Ableton later. And I'm gonna show you that later. So now let's say that we want to make a little melody over this uh, beat. We now have the chromatic pad layout, which is uh, which is uh, fine, but it's a little complicated to play this efficiently in the app, especially because it's on a touch screen, so you don't have any tactile feedback on what keys you're pressing. But then we can use the scale feature again, go into key and scale, turn it on and go to, since we're in C major, we can do a C major pentatonic right here. Uh, 
And then we can turn the metronome back on. So we have a one bar count in. And uh, now I'll just try and play ideas I kind of liked and see how that works. Okay, so maybe we're happy with that melody, but maybe we don't like the sound. We don't really have to worry about changing the instruments right now because we have so many more options in the desktop app, in the computer software. So let's just say we're happy with this kind of bright, detuned, warm saw keys preset, knowing that we won't use it later. And then we can maybe play around with the samples. So we can uh, go into Ableton's core uh, library. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So we could use that one, for example. It's kind of fun. Yay. Okay, so then we have a tiny little live set right here with five different elements. Now this set is very much on the sketch level and it's probably most how I would use it and maybe how a lot of you guys would use it because you do have a very limited amount of instruments and also I don't love most of the presets in the uh, app, but I'm sure they're gonna add more presets as well with future updates. But here in this arrangement, we just made a small little sketch for a vibe. Now, when you're happy with what you've done in uh, Ableton Note and you want to upload it, you have to move it to Ableton Cloud. And that's easy. You simply press the three dots and then the green text here, upload to Ableton Cloud. And then the project is syncing. So let's move over to the computer and then I'll show you how to import it from Ableton Note to Ableton Live. So in order to upload your project from Ableton Note, you need to have updated your Ableton Live to the Live 11.2.5 version or else it won't work. And when you have the necessary version of Ableton Live, you will see here where it says places, you have an extra menu item called cloud. So when you press it, you will get the set that you uploaded on your mobile device. So now if we open this, and here we have the set that we just made on the iPad. So we have the 707 kit, the piano, Yay. sampler, Organ bass. Yay. So now you can easily just change whatever instrument. So if you have third party plugins, for example, I don't really love this instrument, the warm saw keys. So you could use, uh, let's say, if I want to do. If I want to use the Analog Lab 5, I can just uh, find a nice preset here, for example. If we go to lead. Yay. different base we can for example use a Rickenbacker
and when you're happy with your session you can of course arrange it you know do whatever you feel like doing Yay. And then all of a sudden you have a full set. So I actually really love this app and I also love that it's not trying to be a full DAW. It's just giving you, just like the name says, it's like a very simple notepad. I only wish I had an iPhone and not only an iPad because you can tell that the pad layout on the app is designed to be played with your thumbs. So it is a little finicky on the iPad, but it's still very cool. So this is definitely something that I'm going to keep using in the future as well. And I also hope that in future app updates that they're going to expand the preset library, maybe add presets that have a wider genre spectrum. So what do you think? Are you going to use the new Ableton Note app? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And thank you for watching. Please leave a like because that really helps my channel a lot and it's completely free. And I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, you can check out this pretty old video that I made where I made a full song using only rain sounds.